Yeah, we are ready. Oh, let me just start a timer on my phone so when it gets to an hour, we'll stop. All right. Let's kick it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to B Tech Philosophers with me, Michael Odawale, and my co host. That makes it sound like you're like like the second, but you're equal. Elliot Still. Thank you. Thank what's you. The, what's a better than co host? Co host. The emperor of the podcast. I feel like that is, that's slightly above. I feel like uh, we're both two CEOs. No, no, it's no, like there can only be one CEO. No, no, you got like the McDonald's guys, like the guys who they made... were famously pushed out. All oh, right, so who's gonna push us out? Maybe it'll be our, our producer Vittorio. Who's also yeah, with yeah, us. yeah. You're both co-hosts and I'm host, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to McDonald's us. I but, think that, I think that would make sense, seeing as you're the only person here who actually knows anything about <laughs> philosophy, and I know so little. About <laughs> <philosophy. laughs> generally, generally, I was like, when we started, I was like, look, we'll just we'll just learn as we go along, <laughs> and we have learned nothing. <laughs> what do you mean, like we we ponder stuff? That is philosophy. We are we are philosophers. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even really know what philosophy <laughs> is. I'll tell you what happened. I I had to I wanted to do a podcast with Mike for ages. Yeah. I had to convince him, so I was like, fuck it, I'll come from a philosophy angle. Came up with the name B Tech Philosophers, he went, yeah, that's something I'm into. And I was like, Michael knows something about philosophy. <laughs> 11 episodes in. Nah, he don't. No, 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 no. <laughs> he knows fuck all. I like, to, I like to look deep and stare at stuff and then people just assume that I know stuff, but I don't I don't really know much. I didn't know, like, you actually had a podcast before me. You had one with uh, Tom Horton. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was two, it was called Opposite Ends. You pointed out the other day, it doesn't really make much sense because we're not actually that far apart. I no. mean, no, do you know what I mean? It's you're not like two white people doing well. That's, yeah. <laughs> you're not the opposite ends of anything. You're two white people who live in their dad's <laughs> house, just one lives in a palace, the other lives in the attic of his Radio 4 father. Two whites doing all right should have been the real name <laughs> of the pod. But that makes it sound you could have like whites all right. <laughs> that sounds like we'd have a very different fan base for what we were going for. You would have got way more views than you actually did. Did get um uh but that, no I'm glad that you cancelled that one and then did one with me instead. It's all right. It's just if we called it whites all right, the live shows would have been more of a rally. Yeah, yeah, it would have been more manifesto type. So I'm glad that um it'll already be half manifesto when we do our live shows. No, I, I generally don't get much of a uh that kind of white audience really. Do you not like? I after mean, I get shows. white audience, but I don't get. I'm I'm in this weird place with the audience. I guess you don't you don't get anything after the show. Where it's like you know what, mate. You know, uh, come in, you know. Yeah, I, I like you. I like your stuff, mate. So, We're yeah. on the same line of thinking, mate. You ever get any of that? Yeah. So I I deliberately put things in it that are anti EDL right. or things like that. So because I towed a line a little bit sometimes. Yeah, you just like you got that Bill Burr thing. Thank you. That's very kind yeah. of you. Got that Bill Burr kind of like. That's so nice of you to lie to him. Yeah. <laughs> You're just furious yeah. he didn't say that to you. <laughs> Every white Fuck comedian. Line him. <laughs> I know Bill Burr is the Beyonce of all white comics, so I just, I just dropped that compliment to all of them. Hey right, man, you got you got that Eddie Murphy thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. Yeah, but I mean, you're massively homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> but I regret it now. But I regret it now. But um, yeah, man. You so you must have that like. You ever had that, like, officially a guy come oh, up to yeah. you and be like, what was, it, what, what was that? What happened? No, I used to have a bit about being held up by some Islamic extremists out after a gig. Mm. So I had jokes about that in it. And what, what was funny was... It's hard to explain. No, sometimes you, I notice it with like the race. You know the bit where I, I, I've got a bit, not to give a punch on away, where it's fully in context, it's fine, but I do a Z car once yeah, yeah. It's fine. When that gets a little bit too big of a laugh, <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. All right, let, me, let, me, let me take this back a little bit. Or sometimes where I joke about my cult, uh, Jewishness and do yeah. a Holocaust joke or something, and it fucking murders. And I think, yeah, I'm uh, I'm probably going to lose them when I point out I'm part Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I did a show one time where, because uh, I got this bit about my granddad who was uh, who could be anti-Semitic. Uh, my it was with my family history is all fucked up, and. Uh, I, I I was I had this bit where one of the build up to it is my granddad going like I don't like the Jews they all know the world banks they don't work Saturdays and this woman just went yeah they do <laughs> well like yeah they do work Saturdays yeah, yeah like, they do own the world banks it's true and I was just like ma'am I'm... <laughs> oh I thought they were disagreeing about the yeah, Saturdays no 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 she was she was she's she... a very hard working people actually <laughs> her, her agreement was with the with they own all wow. the banks it was yeah. 
I don't get that because I everyone brings up the the Rothschilds people. I don't actually know what that. Who are they? And I heard they're not as even as rich as people make out. They were part of the group that I believe it was in 1917. There was a meeting that happened on an island where basically the JP Morgans, the Rothschilds and all of these people removed gold. It's from uh, they they removed gold from behind the currency, so money is just a complete belief system. The only reason money has value is because we all in this group. Yes, it was the end of the gold standard, is what it was called. Yes. That happened in nineteen seventeen. No, but there was one in nineteen seventeen where they agreed about making. They, I think, they worked out how to like profit of war and financial crashes. Which actually my natural granddad was involved in. Joe mm, Dweck okay. was involved in uh, after the financial crash of 1980 or 1970. And was he with Off the Curb? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, all right, Leo Curse. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have one fucking podcast <laughs> in this studio where me and my dad aren't, aren't shat on Winkley? <laughs> That's funny because uh, trusty Elliot... hogs are probably up to it as well. <laughs> uh, to give context, Elliot is the product of deep nepotism. Um, that's that's kind of that sort of like was the first half of his career, but then he lost it all, and now he's kind of like <laughs> making it on his own. So that that's to give context to listeners who don't know what we're it's talking about. It's a riches to rags. Story. Yeah, yeah riches. <laughs> I've never seen anyone fuck up their privilege as much as... I've never seen anyone snatch defeat from the jaws of victory as, as well as, as, well as Elias has. Uh, uh, it's horrible that uh, some of my TV appearances are with him. And my, <laughs> my Radio 4 sitcom Unite was also involving him. Uh, <laughs> but no, no, it's all merit on myself. Oh, yeah, all, all merit. But yeah, man, it's, it's, it's an interesting episode. What about this Rothschilds so people? They, so they they helped all, all, all the groups like that, the JP Morgan's Rothschilds, all of that that went on, Goldman Sachs, removed the gold standard behind the currency there's also uh, war profiteering and things all of all of that sort of stuff but the thing that conspiracy theorists do speaking as someone who used to be heavily into conspiracy mm, theories used to yeah I, I can't i can't i can't do that anymore man mm-hmm. I want, I, you know i want to keep my friends yeah <laughs> I, you, you know what i mean you can't I, be that yeah guy. exactly you don't want to be that guy yeah and uh they they then it, what, what what conspiracy theorists i think get wrong is they look for conspiracies within everything right so even the, something like the will smith slap that becomes well they were doing that because the oscars is losing is losing viewing yeah, figures he was wearing a cheek pad and yeah all this yeah, shit yeah. and it's like no i think he's a crazy scientologist and just went and slapped the, yeah, you know yeah. what i mean just went and you know he, he's clearly in quite an abusive relationship from what it seems he seems horrible you see this is, this is this is you know, it's quite interesting. This whole it's come up recently, especially with the Amber Heard situation as well. People seem to talk about toxic femininity, femininity, femininity. <laughs> but no, toxic but bad women. Bad what you've got to remember when women are horrible is it's because they have borderline personality disorder, yeah. which is fair enough. They should be allowed to behave any way that they see fit. But all bad and women. Then, and then go, do you know how hard it is for me to have a mental health problem? And then we need to go, oh, we all need to change for you. Yeah. Because that's what borderline personality is. It's a type two personality disorder. So if you as a woman ever do anything wrong and you're a white woman and just say, I've got borderline personality disorder. <laughs> I'm sorry I burnt that bus of school kids alive. Okay. But you don't know the struggle <laughs> I'm going through <laughs> and how hard it is for uh, me on a daily basis to not burn a bus of school children. Have you ever, you sound like you dated a woman with, <laughs> it sounds personal. Have you ever dated a woman who's kind of been using that as an excuse? I probably. Uh, <laughs> we can redact. We'll, we'll redact. Bleep out names and everything. I I, I have uh, family members who have borderline personality disorder. Oh he's really? Great Tommy Tiernan, but Tommy Tiernan has it, and he's a great bit about it. He's like, it means I flip from psychosis to neurosis. Um, yeah, can we Google like actually what the symptoms yeah, are? Yeah. Like that? Well, stuff. Tommy Tiernan's explanation is neurosis is bad for me. Psychosis. <laughs> I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm saying it's not like a uh, absolver. Yeah, people do this. I think with mental health issues. So yeah. I've got ADHD. Mm-hmm. I people are, I'm always being told I need to go take Ritalin or Adderall, one of those things. And it's, I go, no. Do you know what I need to do? Plan my day out and stick to it. Yeah. And if I don't, because that's 
that's my due. It's like the way I always describe it, right? We've got with mental health issues at the moment. It's like you've broken your arm. And instead of going putting it in a cast, you've gone and walked down Oxford Street and been like, why are all these people bumping into me? Don't they know I've got a broken arm? And it's like, yeah, that's your problem. Yeah, well, you, that, it's that's not what, the well. Like, that's where the help comes in, in terms of helping you. Well, go hey, get man, help. your arm is broken. Yeah, go get it. But don't people don't expect the world to... It's, it's People expect the world to change. Depression is fucking horrible. Yeah. It's really difficult. We should have mental health services to support that. But do you know what's even worse? Do you know what's worse? Schizophrenia. And we have no sympathy for people who were down <laughs> in white ace at seven in the morning. Yeah. Screaming at lampposts. And it's like, maybe we should deal with actually, them first. That's harmless. <laughs> really? Who are you, who are you hurting? <laughs> yeah, to be fair, the lampposts can deal with it. Lampposts can deal with that. Yeah, that's a fair point. You're benefiting the economy by buying right aces. I'm sure the market, like the market demographic of people buying right aces are mainly schizophrenic people. So they are really, you know, supporting that economy. Yeah, I just I just think, especially because in uh, in comedy, everyone everyone clearly has a... a I think everyone's actually more open about their mental Well, everyone's got a show about it now. Yeah. Everyone's got their... Boo. Autism show and, and you know what? When you're doing show. yours. Everyone's <laughs> 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 got their show about it. I've got a joke about I might have it. This is one joke. I'm not going to do it. Might. Hour. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I've never used my nepotism properly. You've never used your autism properly. <laughs> yeah, but like, but when are you going to do some maths? <laughs> no one cares about black autism. <laughs> No one cares about black autism. I'm not winning awards for black autism, nah, no, man. No, fuck that. I, I can't even name a black autistic person. There's plenty, plenty out there, man. Like, but just like they don't, because we don't diagnose it, and so it's just, oh, that's aggressiveness. Do you think that's cultural? Do you think like like doctors have been like, your kids got autism, and then like the families oh, no. are like, no. I, I, I thought you were going to put more flavor. Mm -mm. Uh, no, I was not. Oh, I, I was sat I was I was again. It's a spicy first like, ten minutes. Oh, hell no. Michael, was, <laughs> what about that guy yesterday who came up to you after the Top Secret show? Oh, shit. But that, that, was, a, that was a white guy, innit? Yeah. And he came up to I was doing a, a, a split with uh, Baba Tunde. And he was just coming up and, like, reciting some of our jokes and what he liked about some of our and we'll, me, um, Victoria and Baba Tony were all so tense because we're like, we don't know what he's going to say. <laughs> like, and then, like, I was already practicing the fake laugh I was going to do when he said something racist just to, like, make it less awkward. Like, ha ha. Ah, yeah, but then moving on. Why is that the same laugh you do most for the podcast? Ha ha ha. Yeah, next topic. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, yeah. Shit, was it? Did, but he was all right, but he was just like, yeah, so I was remember this one time I was in court and there was a black guy in there and I was like, mm, okay, I don't know where this story's going to go. I don't like it. It's a tough one as a white, so I... I have this because I went to school in like Fulton. I went mm. to school in West Norwood and stuff. My school was majority black. Right? So you kind of talk in this way that's like very uh, not, you know, when you could tell white people haven't grown up in a diverse area because they go, I don't see color. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you do grow up in a diverse area, uh, it's that's actually a lot of the jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of the banter is about that at school, which is fine because you, you know the person. I just think like when you got like a white uh, person who enjoyed your show, like, and they want to express praise. You just you, like you. You're a bit tense mm. about how comfortable they're gonna be in expressing the praise. Well, what he said was, he was like, I remember, like, the, yeah, he was in court, and then there was this Nigerian guy. Yeah, and yeah, he was that was talking it. Talking about the the insults that other Nigerians would use against yeah, him. Yeah, so and like, I was yeah. like, what's he about to say? What's he about to say? <laughs> it was actually a funny premise because he was saying like he was talking about a white judge who's reading out. Uh, insults that Nigerians had said just as like the evidence which is a funny bit that's funny actually so me and Babatunde I should take that but, like, in, in the end and we might we might do that that's but, actually uh, very funny yeah. it's like a funny uh, like so it's a funny premise that he gave us but we were just tense about like where is he gonna go yeah. with this bit of and the funniest part was because he was with his mum I think it was his mum was like 85 and yeah. Babatunde and fist bumped his, <laughs> he fist bumped Babatunde like yeah cheers for that yeah the good show but that's the, the I I, like I, that. I find the fist bump is it's a hard one as a white person because sometimes you're going for the handshake and the fist bump is there so then you feel mm. and then you don't want to be leading with the fist bump because then it feels a little bit trying to be like hey man I like Kendrick Lamar 
I Do you know what I mean? You feel a little bit like I would. If it was very, I would have voted Obama for yeah. a third time. So it's a tough. So now I just go for elbows. I've had so many mm. post pandemic. I don't know if it's like social, just trying to get used to society. I've had so many misunderstandings with the fist bump uh, as opposed to the handshake. Like I'll go in confident with the fist bump, and I'm like, oh, they're not, they're not clenching. Yeah. And then I'll go to do the handshake. And they clench. Yeah, and it's. I think it's just happening way more post pandemic with the whites. I've been the frequency between us has has been lost, and I just don't know. Although I've noticed the thing, my black friends when they come in for a handshake, yeah. they come in from a distance. Well, that's the so one. They do up, the dragon. Yeah, the, up, yo, they're like, yeah, they're they want to give you the, the hug. Yeah, so when you come yeah. in from the distance, that's the sign they want to give you the, the little the little shoulder tap. So that is cultural. You know, you know that now, and that's what's happening there. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, well, glad we solved that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what <laughs> that's, we're doing. That's racism over. Racism done. Welcome, everyone. But I, I want to get back to the, the toxic this femininity, feminin femininity, bad women, if yeah. we can. Because um, I, I was, because like Johnny Depp and Amber Heard specifically, they're going all out in this court case. They're, yeah. they're revealing everything. And so I found out Amber Heard allegedly she shat in Johnny Depp's bed as, as a form of anger. What? That's, like she just she shit in his bed because she was mad at him. Yeah, and I don't, I don't I'm I think that would you like so philosophical question for woman shit in your bed is that is that red flag? You get out of my house! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing shitting in my bed? What's more scary if like it was is an accident? Red? <laughs> is that a red flag that a woman has purposefully <laughs> shat in my bed? That, like, like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Like, what if it like it's scary because like what well, she did it on demand. Like, I don't. It depends. Like, I have so many questions about how this shit. She blamed it on the dogs. But you can, Johnny, tell, you can Johnny tell. You can tell. Said shit. Johnny Depp said, "Yeah, they wear it. They weigh four pounds each." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did they? <laughs> There's no way. I imagine Johnny Depp's dogs would be fed well at least, so you know mm. they could be holding in that I, shit. I reckon. I, I reckon they both do allegedly a lot of blow, even though it's been brought up in court. Um, mm. If you do a lot of coke, apparently you really need to go for a shit uh, because a lot of time it's cut with a uh, baby laxative. Right. Okay. So a lot of time when when people apparently do cocaine. So if you had a night out on the rack and then got to sleep, it, it is a possibility that you you need to shit. Mm. So it could be that that's happened, and she's just tried to turn it round from I've I've, I've shit myself. To, yeah. Well, she's gone from because like if you do something wrong, steer into it every now and then. Go. No, I meant to shit the bed. Well, fuck you, John. Okay. So is it a red flag if your woman shits your bed by the, accident? The whole thing is a red flag. Yes. If anyone shits the bed as an adult, I don't understand this thing where adults have seen. Uh, uh, Kai Humphreys has about four stories a year where he shits himself. I and I always have four. to be like, D you're an adult. Yeah. <laughs> that shouldn't be happening. Yeah. You don't need to. after two. It's not funny it's anymore. It's not. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Shitting yourself as an adult. I had an argument with her ex girlfriend because we were talking about this hypothetically. She was like, "Well, what if I was ill?" And I'd be like, "But then just go to the toilet." Yeah, I don't understand. You don't. I mean, literally get your shit together. Yeah, your shit. Mad. Yeah. Yeah. I. I think. The, I feel like the public. I've been reading about this. I feel like in, on the internet at least they seem to be pro Johnny Depp. As that seems to, to be the resounding feeling. Is I, this because he was in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? The she, worst, the worst tweet that I saw about it was basically saying that. Did you see that tweet where somebody said he should uh, hate Johnny Depp? I hope wins the court case, and then turns around to the court and goes, "You always remember the time you almost caught Captain Jack Sparrow?" And everyone was like, "This is a domestic abuse trial, man. <laughs> 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 this is serious. This is That's really got to be uh, means for a straight retrial, if anything. If, you, if he stands up and does that, you gotta <laughs> actually we change our mind. I feel like death penalty. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting though, because I my my opinion, the way I've read it, I feel like there was equal. Uh, abuse like he might have she might she doesn't sound like a nice woman to me but I feel like there was equal shenanigans going on they're both actors fucking mental yeah so I, but I feel like the public even though it probably was equal abuse they still like pro Johnny Depp over her just cause like they don't like her they feel like she's a very toxic woman but uh, that's interesting because I, the, the assumption would be that in like particularly in like domestic abuse people would take the male on female yeah. abuse much more seriously but it seems like people are really 
taken this as a moment to go, oh no, it actually does happen the other way and it doesn't get spoken about at all. It does, and uh, it doesn't get spoken about seriously because it's fucking hilarious. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, oh, like, you're, being, you're being beaten up by someone half your size? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, like, obviously. It's like when, when Terry Crews had a me too, everyone was like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, Pick on. them up and yeah. throw them out the window. <laughs> yeah, some guy was I, grabbing Terry Cruz's balls. I yeah, I yeah. had that in a in a queue at Wembley the other day when I was at the FA Cup semi final. Terry Cruz grabbed your balls. No, nah, this this guy he probably deserved that. I, I what happened was we were in the queue, he was being very laddie, he was behind me, and then as the, the queue for the beers was mental, this guy walked by and he sort of did a pound on the shoulder, and I just turned around and was looking and I saw him grab his ass, and I was like, Oh fucking hell, I've got a couple secrets there have you sunshine like you two hooking up on a slide you said that to no him. i didn't said that but <laughs> i thought it and then when i was at the front of the queue he kept like rubbing into me but i was feeling his hand on my ass mm. i kept feeling it feeling it and i was about to sort of turn around and be like look if you touch my ass again i'll fucking but i was just like oh, do you know what you're just at the football just get sexually harassed for a second it'll be over in a minute just get your big <laughs> fuck off and, Elliot, are you okay <laughs> yeah i went and told my dad and my dad just laughed <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this guy was grabbing my ass in the queue. And when I just started laughing. You, you, you resigned to it. But I tell you what it is, right? Because as a guy, there is no... You were just thinking of England. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, just, I was just there going, I hope we play Gallagher. Oh, we can't, he's out. <laughs> but I, I, there was no physical threat. For for me anyway, okay, I, yeah. I I I didn't feel like I there there is this is where it is different when people are like you know I've been sexually harassed like fuck after gigs by women I had an mm. old lady just come up and start like <clears throat> lips to me one time it was horrible but it's it's kind of funny because there is no physical yeah. threat but when a man does it to a woman. There is the, you know, oh, I am also twice your size and can throw you through a glass window. Oh, you know, there's it, that thing. What if it was a woman who was twice your size then? Uh, fair, well, look, the thing <laughs> is, isn't it, is like, I do jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai. If a woman can hold me down and pin me, fair play to her. She's trained enough. She's earned it. Like, that's <laughs> what, <laughs> fair enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> I had a, I worked in a bar once and there was this enormous guy. He was like six foot nine, size like 18 feet or something. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. And he was a gay guy, and after a shift once, someone was like, uh, like they were talking to me, and they were like, oh, you're you're Irish, aren't you? And I was like, yeah, and they are like, oh, I've got a bit of Irish in me. And this massive guy like was sat right next to me and just looked at me and went, I'd like a bit of Irish in me. <laughs> and I was, it was that moment where I was like, if he wanted to, yeah, like I'm done, like, yeah. there's no way. I can't true? do I can't do anything about that. And it is very, very scary. The menace in the air, like, yeah. And Even if he said that as intended as a joke, just because yeah, of the like, context of it, uh, you're like, yeah. And I one time at Victoria Station, this guy, I was, I was on the toilet, and this these two fingers kept coming under, like, so the the rip between the two the other cubicle, these two fingers kept coming wow. over and rubbing. I was like, what the fuck is this? There's these two fingers kept coming under, and I was like, so what's this guy doing? And then so I went down and looked and he was having a wank and like was signaling for me to come over. So I just went nuts in it. I was like, you can't be fucking wanking next to me, bro. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then I like, went in and it, uh, he was very sheepish. You went in? Sorry? What? Yeah, I went in. Go in. <laughs> <laughs> fucking angry. <laughs> wanking at me. I went in and then the uh, I, I kind of... I had a word with myself because he was like, I thought I was like, maybe he's not... This guy's like, this is a cruising place. You know what I mean? I shouldn't... Being there, you know, but I don't want to get all fucking what the fuck and you know. I and then, to glory holes, man. It wasn't a glory hole, but it was, it, you know, I don't want to go in there and then the story is I've beaten up a gay dude. No, you don't. You, you know just, what I mean? Don't wanna, you feel, don't want to beat up a guy with his dick out. It's not a good look. Yeah, but also I just, I just feel like ah, uh, it, it doesn't really affect my day that much. Uh, I, do you know what I mean? I, d I don't need to get angry. But do about you think you're thing. just pushing? Because that that's pretty horrible. Like, and I, and I'm the same. Like, anytime anything like my like I would be like, oh, it doesn't affect me that much. But do you think maybe it actually does? And you're kind of like, you've just pushed thing, it down. Just yeah. pushing it down. Probably, yeah. But I mean, I've already got enough stuff down there. You could throw a, throw a bloke wanking <laughs> in the toilet next to me. I haven't I haven't resolved all the issues with my mum yet. I should probably do that. <laughs> I mean, if I'm that, if I'm that. <laughs> I should probably I should probably go around it. Me and my mum have a relationship. Go around. How's it going? Let's put the TV on. No, I see it in the same time next month. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I really, So I should probably that do Sounds quite that. nice, to be honest. Like, that <laughs> sounds like yeah. a good relationship. What would you do in that scenario, Mike? I mean, if a man was. So, like, you're in the toilet, cubicle. Yeah. 
And then you look, see, I wouldn't even, my head couldn't even go that, down that it far. Coming under the door, and I was like, what the fuck is that? I feel like that would definitely ruin my day. Uh, I, I, know, I know I wouldn't fight him. No, I I don't think, I don't know where it went. Who did you like kick the door down? No, I we, went in, I waited for him to come out. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? I got I got very aggressive. What did he look like? Did so you let him finish? No, he, he went to leave as I went to leave because he saw he was in trouble because I started shouting over like, what the fuck are you doing? I was, and were you mid shit? No, I'd f I finished my shit. That's why I went down. What down angle the... is he wanking to he's also like, be able right, to have so his hands? The, this is a visual thing, but he's like, say this is a cubicle. Uh -huh. He's like, here, he's got that. He's going under like that and he's there doing that. Wow. Right. That's, that's is that the, the international signal? Down, like Gollum? Sorry, let me, let me just say for the viewers, he was basically perched on his knees. Don't make eye contact hand, with me. One please. hand under the door. Don't look at me. <laughs> one, hand under the, one hand under the door, like signaling for me and another hand on his Johnson. His Johnson. His Johnson. <laughs> His Johnson. His Johnson. Well, I feel like you handled that well. Because a lot of guys, they couldn't handle that. They had to, had to, had to fuck people up. I feel like you, you handled that with, with I grace. I think I would have kicked his fingers. Yeah. Yeah. If I'd... there's fingers coming in, I'm kicking them. Yeah, it was... Uh... He's put shit on them. I'm closing TikTok on my phone and I'm kicking their fingers. Yeah. You're biological. <laughs> <laughs> You're just breaking the Geneva Convention. <laughs> Scorched earth policy. But yeah, I, I think what you're saying about men pushing things down is true. Like the amount of things that I've got mm. repressed within me. Like I'm a very shy, sensitive person. When I look at my childhood, I was a very yeah. like, sensitive kid. I'm all that. I think that comes through in a lot of ways. But I definitely, through the school I went to and the fucked up environment I was raising with both my parents, is that I had to build up this wall around yeah. me that I now don't know how to take down. I'm very similar, yeah. Which uh, affects me in relationships, affects me sometimes as well, because I'm so needy. I feel bad if, I, if I'm if i seeing a girl on a casual thing and I end it for my own peace, I then feel immediately really bad. Mm. Because that's another thing that I think with nowadays with like the dating scene and stuff is guys, Guys can be pieces of shit, so, full, like on dates, on all of these things, the hinge culture, all of that, absolutely. But sometimes as a guy, you notice a couple of red flags and you mm, go- like shit in that bed. Shit like, in the bed, mm. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna move away. Well, like a shit stain in the bed is more of a red flag. Like, hmm. well, she cleaned it up, but she didn't yeah, get rid of all not the evidence. Falling, like, what's your most guilty breakup? I remember one time I broke up with a girl like the day before uh, she had a big job interview. But like, I rationalized it like at least like if I if she if like if she didn't get the job the next day, right? She can blame it on me as opposed to her poor interviewing skills. And then if she does get the job, it's like like yeah. fuck you. I'm an independent Bounce woman. Back. Like yeah. yeah. But There's... then like if so that's a win win because if I wait until she doesn't get the job and then I break up, that's a double whammy. Yeah. And if she does get the job, I've kind of dampened the day. So I was like, I did the right. Thing. I think so. I haven't checked the LinkedIn account since to see if the update, <laughs> but I, I like to think I did the right thing in that She hasn't updated it since I broke up with her. I wonder what. <laughs> There's just loads of just, RIPs on her Facebook page. <laughs> just, just multiple views of me a day, a day just like uh, refreshes. But like, I, 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 that's the most guilty breakup I've ever had. Was it, how'd she take it? She didn't want it. She wasn't happy. She's just uh, crying a bit. That's the worst when they cry. Yeah, when they're crying. But I've it, never it, broken up with anyone. Never broken up with anyone? Been broken up with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah, the yeah. most toxic bad woman that's ever broken up with you? Well, I've only really, I've only had basically two big relationships, and mm. I'm currently in the second one. So okay, um, well, yeah, still to come. My first girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a nihilistic <laughs> viewpoint. <laughs> I think I, I think I'm like the girl I'm with now. I'm like probably supposed to be with, and probably will stay oh, with for like the foreseeable. But I've never broken. See, why up do I anyone? feel like I can't stomach that? Yeah, Elliot, do you know what Elliot I mean? Was about to call me gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're in love with a woman, you homosexual. Uh, <laughs> was it you in that cubicle next to me? <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> but the last one, she broke up with me like three times. But the the last time was on the um, was on the twenty first of December. Oh gosh. Um, which I thought was pretty. I like I bought presents for her and her whole family, but. Like I think the 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 more compassionate way to look at it is I can I kind of completely understand because in the lead up to like a nice time and a nice event and Christmas and all that stuff, if you want to break up with someone, it must be so difficult to like 
because it would feel like such a lie yeah to go through the whole niceness of like presents and christmas and having like that really nice it would just feel so false and then looking back what i find difficult is like when you've been broken up with you know they made the decision two weeks four weeks six weeks before they did it so it taints those last few weeks where you're like what was going on was that all how long yeah were they just like i i I, 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 they say women mentally leave a lot longer before they actually decide to do the deed do you think men are the same do we mentally check out or is that way quite more impulsive with a breakup Mm, i don't know with my last uh breakup which was fucking horrific uh still is it was it's ongoing yeah d- thanks mike um <laughs> you said it still is you provided that i just chipped in <laughs> why don't you just bring up my uh my credit card thing else as well while we're at it <laughs> no, I, yeah no it was it was awful when it happened uh i will go into it a little bit you yeah. didn't go to belgium for this what, what'd you make on <laughs> <laughs> mike went to belgium for a girl and nothing happened between them. <laughs> We we addressed this on the, on the second part. It's, it's done. Mike had to, Mike went through customs. It's <laughs> passport control. My, my, what's you, your reason for being in this country? Uh, Business uh, or pleasure? Uh, Neither, apparently. Did you get fucked over by an unelected <laughs> year? <laughs> and in Brussels, too much at Brussels the UN, yeah. <laughs> Mike went there to give him a piece of his mind. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I had uh, my. Uh, uh, the basically what what happened was there was a few there was a few things but she went through my phone yeah tricky oh that's a rough one right there wait and there was incriminating evidence on the phone you can always find incriminating you evidence. can always find incriminating evidence. you're always going to see something you don't want to see on someone's phone also really? Also, as a... My I, I would let anyone check my phone right now. <laughs> Fuck no. Uh, Jesus Christ, no way. I wouldn't let anyone... Actually, no, no, I changed that. I wouldn't now. let anyone go through my room. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the same thing. I don't like it when people go through my stuff. But it was... my. The other thing is, is sometimes is you say part of the social media game, especially in the job we are in, is I have to reply to people mm-hmm. so sometimes you're going to see me being friendly with people sometimes that isn't i have necessarily... to directly message instagram models <laughs> to promote my show it's called networking <laughs> <Michael. Yeah. laughs> i have to like these booty pics for my job for the algorithm <laughs> <laughs> Alright, look, I was trying to fuck Instagram models, innit? Like, what do you want from me? <laughs> no, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't. Oh my god, this is gonna get me so much shit this episode. But I, I you know, it's my life, fuck it. Live it the way I want, you know? You don't have to use, we don't have to go into any. No, 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 but I wouldn't, I wouldn't explain because, but also there was other things within the relationship. It was a little bit, there was, uh, it was a little, let me put it this way, there was a bit of a two way street. Mm. And mm-hmm. in my opinion, uh, I wasn't being allowed down my way sometimes, but the other way was very much open at points. If you see what I'm saying. Are you getting pegged, Elliot? Yeah, I w- w- I'm not really but sure. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't what I was trying to make from that analogy. But uh, Me- we'll metaphors up are supposed to make things clearer. I, I was less clear. I don't even know if the metaphor itself made sense. No, I don't, I don't understand. No, no, no. But I, I find that, uh, well, back to my previous point, is like things that, because like the going through the phone thing, I was speaking about this actually to my friend yesterday who she wrote this brought up on the podcast when we we're talking about toxic femininity, toxic masculinity, was she had been in a situation where uh, a person she was seeing, I don't want to hear, hear up her spot too much, but was taking, wasn't, they were in a, very much in a relationship, but would be posting on Instagram all the time, but never pictures of her. And well, the person might not fit their Instagram aesthetic. Okay, so that was his excuse, uh, which is an mm-hmm. which what he's really, in my opinion, what he's doing is he's leaving the option of fucking other girls open. Mm. So there's an interesting thing with this. There's a uh, I won't. Oh, there's a big internet sketch group in Ireland, and you'll probably know them. Uh, no. They don't. They deliberately don't wear their wedding rings in any of their videos or any of their social media posts. Okay. Just because they know it affects it. They don't want to sleep around, but they know it affects the numbers. Oh, right. Okay. Internet I, sketch comedy group? 
They're huge. They're huge. I know exactly who he's on about. There's, you'll know them as well. They're, like they sell out a huge room in Edinburgh yeah. every year. Yeah, like uh, they're funny boys. Yeah, yeah. And um, but there's an interesting thing that I found. I don't know if you, if I do a set uh, at a show when I don't mention my girlfriend, I get more Instagram followers after that set really? than if I do mention. How, my how do you contend with that? Because this is a thing that the biggest thing I need to work on myself at the minute is because of my need to be liked. Mm -hmm. I I have a real issue with that. And as I've, I started comedy when I was 16, mm -hmm. I noticed now as a 25 year old sort of good comedian, average looking guy, like you- We're three sexy boys. Three sexy boys. <laughs> sexy boys. Sexy, uh, which, which one of us are you leaving out? Cause there's four of us <laughs> in the room at the minute. <laughs> so there's, there's, uh, interning in the room, but it's not, it's not spoken. What, what sexy boys in the room, but three are currently with microphones. Three on uh, mic, yeah, but, yeah. But the, the ability for it to, to happen. Now, I spoke to a friend about this, a good friend of ours actually, mm -hmm. who used to be somewhat of a shag, now very much married, happy, lived his life. And mm -hmm. I was talking to him about it because it really affects me. Like it, it's something that I don't like about myself. And he was saying, ah, you're, he basically went, dude, you're 25. Your physiological state at the minute is, oh my God, you're contending with the physiological part of you and a bit of you that thinks it's wrong. So it's a really difficult thing to yeah. go through. And he was explaining it in a way, almost like a sort of puberty thing. Like your hormones are going, oh my God, I could do this. And he goes, what dating and 20, being 25 is, and I really liked his analogy is the idea of red flags and stuff to bring it back to that, is he goes, when you're in your mid twenties, you should be going around hooking up with people, men and women, and then you see the red flags of what there are, and then you meet what you do like, you meet what you don't like, and eventually you're able to go, these are my limits as you get older. Mm. But you can only do that through experiencing it. But if you do that, a girl's called a slag, which I think is, I, I think slut shaming's fine, but it needs to happen for both genders. Mm. That's my thing. Because sometimes there's a difference between Oh my God, I've gone to a nightclub. I've met a beautiful person. I want to hook up with them. Amazing. There's a difference between I need to hook up with someone. Yeah. There is a there is a difference. Yeah, I agree. I feel like there is becoming a culture of male uh, slut shaming. Fuck, Fuck boys. boys. Yeah, I was watching that show Too Hot to Handle. Where, you Which know, is such a bizarre... Explain the show for people that don't know. So it's like a group of people on, a, on, a, on an island, kind of Love Island vibes type looking people but they're not allowed to have sex or they lose money. I think you start with a certain amount of money. Are they allowed to jerk off? I don't even know if you're allowed to. You're not allowed to kiss. No. No No, no, no jerking joking. off, no kissing. Uh, I think you're are you allowed to hug and touch. Let's get the official rules up because they, they're set. Bruv, go like, on this show. You would win so much money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I be it, so rich. I've got, like, I've got like a dead low sex drive. So I can hey. just go on, chill out. I've play fucking took my way all day and be fine. I have so many opportunities. <laughs> Watching a bit of fingering happen. Like, Losers. <laughs> I own Park Lane. <laughs> uh, so the I'd premise win, is win the show is hosted by a cone shaped virtual assistant named Lana. The yeah, looks revolves, like Alexa. Revolves around a group of adults, all of whom primarily engage in meaningless flings and are unable to form long lasting relationships. Mm. Who are placed together in a house for four weeks. While there, the contestants must go through various workshops, all while being forbidden from any kissing, sexual contact, or self gratification. Wanking. Uh, the idea behind this is to foster genuine connections between the participants. Contestants start with a hundred grand prize that gets reduced any time a rule is broken. So, uh, yeah, people really fuck up and lose a lot of money because they just so hard for them. I mean, I mean, you know, you got that like the night vision camera and you just see them yeah. on top of There was, show. I think the first season, like a couple lost like 30 grand within the first day. Yeah. Because oh. they just fucked. Do you know what? But these are like, this is why, like, just hand it all over to China. <laughs> President <laughs> like, we, we are We are losing an empire in no, a disastrous way. The, the country with a billion people. So like, they're, they're fucking too. Let's not get out. Yeah, but um, they, there's, there was a one child policy and they follow, you know, they, they are going yeah. to take over and it's going to be hardcore. Yeah, they throwing and, babies out, you know, and stuff like that too. Let's not forget. But, um, <laughs> let's, let's not forget. <laughs> yeah. I, love it, I love it when people, right, are always like, this sounds fucked up, right? But you see when people are like, oh, you can 
Let, you, you never forget. Like the Holocaust, you must never forget. And it's like, what, even when I'm like having a Twix or something? <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't, like I can't sit there and be like, oh, man. do you know what I mean? You can't, You sometimes you have to. I think they mean to me like, in, for like the next genocide. I don't think they just mean like, just when you're eating chocolate. Okay. Well, there has been several since and we seem to. Yeah, we, we forget a lot, which is probably why the, the catchphrase needs to. I'm not sure it's a catchphrase. <laughs> but the, it's, <laughs> the tagline for this uh, this genocide. All genocides should have a tagline, to be fair. I like have a catchphrase. Yeah, it's like a little line to kind of sum it up. No, it could be like in a little Britain way that everyone's, you know, you've got yeah, but no, but. Yeah, what something like that. You know what I mean? I'm not going to name what I think the catchphrases are. Well, go on. I'm what, not, what, what I'm do not, you I'm think? Not, Let's go into that. this. No, 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 no. We're moving on. Um, <laughs> but, like, the thing about this too hot to handle show is these are, like, the reason it's hard is these are the top shaggers in the country. These are, like, the prep Champions League level shaggers. Shaggers. So, like, it's in their na- They, like, hone their skills to be shaggers. And the only reason I brought it up is because there's an episode uh, in terms of men having to take responsibility where they were talking to their penises and just sort of like on a real human level to like, let's talk about what we've done. You know what I mean? Let's talk about the damage that we've done to society. And But is it, is it like, this is my thing to, at the moment, especially with the, the toxic masculinity, the, the, the toxic femininity stuff is. Bad women. You, but you Bad women, sorry. Mm. The, <laughs> we can't, we can't no, pronounce it. Bad bitches is good. Oh, bad bitches. Yeah, but there, there are things where it's slightly more, I don't know, like if you want it to be a level playing field and stuff with guys, guy, guys who go around and fuck up, like a guy who goes around and just gets loads of women pregnant and then doesn't bother raising the kids. It's it, shameful. It's yeah. shameful. It's disgusting. But if a guy is going around there, consensually, you know what I mean? Not being a, an alleged Tim Westwood, like going out <laughs> there and uh, I like how we're using alleged a lot on this podcast. We, yeah, we, we, we really, just for legal Yeah, reasons. We, we uh, uh, he, you know, he's going around doing that. There isn't really anything. <laughs> <laughs> I Why is that taking 11 episodes? <laughs> That's the uh, uh, Tim Westwood <laughs> fire in the booth. <laughs> you just, oh, oh my God. Just when, when he, oh ah, God, so many that, jokes I want to make, I can't make it. That, that's that's going to be a triggering uh, sound for a lot of people. <laughs> like, whenever they hear... Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> you reckon they, they'll play that in court? <laughs> <laughs> when they play some of the recording. Yo, what we said is a Tim Westwood. <laughs> we got... <laughs> reload it. No, no, no. no, 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 no move on, move on. Move has on, there man. anybody... Yeah. Has anybody ever been accused of sexual misconduct that you've just immediately gone... Of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, but I'm not yes. going to lie. Like, is Tim West, he's kind of in that category of like, yeah, no, yeah, I, I can see it. Like, 60 year old, yeah. too into hip hop. Fucking, yeah. He had a yeah, kind of man. Gigs. He's still, like, he's been doing Freshers Week yeah. gigs when he's yeah. like a millionaire. Yeah. What, what kind of man puts on a full accent like that? They get clout from a community, like but like that. that's it's an indictment <laughs> of like it's how hard this, it is. Imagine being so insecure with yourself, you appropriate <laughs> something that is clearly nothing to do with you when you're a middle class white boy. It's just disgraceful. <laughs> but you're like it's an indictment, away. like how hard it is for like black people to make it in like their own industry. Like we all just accepted it and we're like, yeah, right, he's he's that's it. He was good though. You he, had to be he, fair. He, some he, of the ciphers. Nah, right? he's not the fucking. You were talking about him like he's the Eminem of DJing, like. But like Eminem he got, he, he everyone, right? everyone went through. Tim yeah, Westwood, but, like, but it was like a real creepy interview he did with Cardi B back in the day, where he was like, because he was wearing a weave, and it's like, what, what do you like? You like thirty two inches, baby? And like Cardi B was like making fun of him, it was like, "Da, make you horny, baby." <laughs> I she was like doing the whole Austin Powers thing because that's like I, re- I really watched that interview. It's really cool the way she kind of takes control of the situation but then is that a thing where women in their field have to sort of laugh off sexual advances the same way Catherine Ryan did with slow tie which was the enemy awards at the enemy uh, when he went up and started you know but also and I I think he's a bit of a wanker personally for that but also on the flip side of that you look at someone and you go well, are we going to say that someone from, you know, a, a council state who's come up through the music industry who gets taken from nothing is then giving quite a lot of money? Girls, you're saying girls follow you from gigs all the time. Imagine being a famous rapper yeah. where girls literally in the front of a show like have a thing where they want him to spit in their mouths 
is then going to have such a warped view yeah. on what he can and can't do that you now it's inexcusable but you you're going to be surrounded by yes men it's not an excuse but you can understand how someone ends up like that yes uh, so i don't want to be like i'm excusing his behavior but i can also understand how you end up but then i don't offer the same feeling for amber heard now i wonder why that because i don't really know too much about her she's in an, she's in that never back down film she was in aquaman was she yeah all right well yeah i, I saw someone on twitter call her aqua bitch <laughs> That's great. What? What? <laughs> what? Straight to the point. <laughs> and that kind of language. You, you water hoe. <laughs> that kind of language is going to be more prevalent <laughs> on Elon Musk's Twitter. You amphibious skeptic. Wait, wait, wait. You hate to hoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not clapping that, my line. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Um, all right, Elon Musk Twitter now. Yeah, man. Elon Musk is... Uh, he's, he's a toxic boy. He used to be... Yeah, I think he used boy. to date Amber Heard. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, what? what? He's given evidence in court for Amber Heard, actually. I uh, I got a... You had a... a I got I got another message, another little moral dilemma. Well, oh, fan, but, fan people send in the moral dilemmas now because there's otherwise... There's so many... Features that we just forget about. And then... <laughs> Should we do people's messages and questions? And yeah, stuff yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that for the yeah. last fifteen, and then we've got that. I got the most mental thing, the most mental DM I've ever received. Okay, so, yeah. Um, so th uh, this was That's from, a long uh, one. Richard, who is a big fan of the podcast. Thanks, it, Richard. Uh, uh, he's saying that basically he owns a gym. And whenever he sees guys doing the selfies or the posing in the mirror, the whole toxic gym bro thing, he's like, I get him out of the gym. It's toxic Whoa. masculinity at his finest. And he's, he just finds it, he finds it very, very, you know, encouraging environment he doesn't want in the gym. Hmm. But So he owns the gym? He owns the gym. Where is his office? The closet? <laughs> <laughs> this, is our, this is our number one fan we're talking about here so let's 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 roll nicely he said he'll sign up to the Vittorio. patreon <laughs> Vittorio, come on oh fuck but i i <laughs> i find i find that it, it, uh, i get what he's saying no nah, it depends how people I are see, doing I can it see it's annoying i don't think that's toxic masculinity. but i i do it in the gym well, you like, for example, that's just could be chart in progress, you know. You yeah, could be like, I, I'm my late my weight loss journey, or just I wanna. There's an old school gym mm -hmm. vibe that if you sort of see the gym is you go there, you lift your weights, eat your protein, do the, all this posing in the mirror. He said, sort of like the fuck boyery of the gym community. Was well, this like a Russian gym where it's just like a plank of wood oh, man, that it... people are lifting? You know what I mean? <laughs> two two things in there. No, I think he runs a decent gym. It's just uh, it, it just he's saying that he doesn't like the toxic male vibe of guys coming in, probably do, standing there in stringy vests, doing all the flexing in the mirror and that. Because and I understand where he's coming from. I've gone to the gym long enough that that's fine. But when you first start going to the gym, that's intimidating. Yeah, it's very intimidating environment for people to come in. Now, usually, I think you'll find if you speak to most of us. My advice for anyone starting gym: those guys doing that, go up to them and be like, "Hey, man, would you? Could you show me how to deadlift? Could you show me how to bench press?" Mm. And they'll ninety nine out of a hundred times be sound and be like, "Yeah, of course, man." People will pass on because so, someone would have shown them. There's that good guy on TikTok who, anytime anyone like videos someone doing something wrong in the gym, he's like, "No, shut up! They're just trying to exercise. They're trying to learn. They're doing this. They're well, doing that." Because this the up. thing, like, it is intimidating. But like, maybe it's a question for another week as well before we get. But like, how much is your self esteem someone else's problem? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because that's a guy just showing off his gains, and now you've inferred so much onto that. And put it like, oh, they shouldn't be doing that. Well, just get your own self-esteem up, surely. Yes, but if I if it's a unisex gym, which of course most gyms are, this is what I was thinking. If if women are in the gym, try. I have like I've never hit on a woman in a gym because it's a, it's a terrible place to do. The, you wait uh, until they get one step out of the building, and then <laughs> you ask them. For them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would never hit on someone in the gym because. It would be, I think, that's not what you're there for. Inappropriate, mm. yeah. Um, and uh, also, I, I they, they see the size of the weights I lift. Mm. They know that I'm I'm not going to be good enough as a father. <laughs> <laughs> that my genes shouldn't be, my genetics shouldn't be passed on. They see my deadlift. Can't lift my baby. <laughs> <laughs> I because, but I got, but speaking of making someone's problem, uh, your yourself see someone else's problem, right? I got 
I got the most insane DM I've ever received on Saturday night after I'm the excited. show. So on the on, staying on topic of toxic femininity, right? On in the front of the show, Glee Cardiff packed out like two sixty people in. I'm on middling, great spot. I, I'll always middle over anywhere else. I don't give a shit. I'm shameless. The on the front row, this couple had a domestic during my set, full on arguing. Mm. She and she was very much in the wrong. Mm. As in, she was interrupting the show. I don't know what the domestic was over, but she was interrupting and mm -hmm. he wasn't. And he was trying to do that. Hey, can you... She then starts like playfully hitting him and stuff. And it was, I couldn't get on with the set. So about 15 minutes of my set is having to deal with this, mm. which is too long. Yeah, it, it went from being funny to like the messages I got afterwards were all, supportive hey you dealt with that well would love to come see you again yeah, and sorry producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i then received this message you know i do a bit about suicide that's a little bit yeah yeah a little bit out there but very rarely gets complaints funny joke i received this i just don't see how any jokes or by the way i say in this bit don't fucking talk to me afterwards about the joke yeah right? I just don't see how any jokes or suicide would be found funny. Myself and a few others actually had to walk out. My dad hasn't even had his funeral and I had to sit and listen to that. Comedians are allowed to joke about anything. I get that, but suicide has no funniness to it whatsoever, right? And I apologize and then I realized this person's dad had killed themselves, right? Yeah. And then I went, hold on. In between their dads killing themselves and not having the funeral, <laughs> They came to a comedy <laughs> show. <laughs> like, 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 oh, we still got the tickets. We <laughs> it's way with the one Oh, fuck, it was in his email. Uh, <laughs> 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 got a spare ticket. Nah, can't can't can't. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> Mates rights. <laughs> Bad can't comic. refund it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just looking for face value. <laughs> What's your refund policy? <laughs> well, it depends why they can't make it. <laughs> upper, upper. <laughs> Please enter. <laughs> Explain more. Like, like, hasn't you, like, you go to a comedy show. After, like, my dad's a comedian. If he killed himself, you wouldn't see me at a comedy show for a while. Fuck me. <laughs> You'd take his spot, see it. Yeah, well. um... Like, who the fuck? Who the fuck? <laughs> oh, do you know? Also, what? like, I didn't know you were going to be here. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, that's it. Uh, yeah. It's you know what I mean, I didn't know. I didn't get an email. Yeah, well, don't email. That's even weirder. Hey, guys, uh, I'm coming to the show tonight, but uh, my dad's just killed himself. <laughs> so if we could lay off the subject. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fuck me. You like oh, that's would, you, would you make that? Because I didn't know if you were shocked that I'd just brought that up. I was laughing at it. Or if you were like, I would just... Well, because it's an interesting thing, isn't it? You don't know. I don't know everybody's story in the audience. I mean, you're doing a bit about something. It's not met, intended to hurt someone if they have a really direct and recent experience of it. So you don't want to do that. Mm. And the, But then how much responsibility? Like, you can't... Like, there's stuff to potentially get upset at. It's just interesting when, like, a lot of your stuff could be, like, like people could be upset about it, right? Yeah. It's just, and then it's just it's that, this one just happens to be... It's that, and, like, it's, it's that thing where they probably laughed at the rest of the set and went, oh, no, that one's about me. Don't. And it's okay to not find it funny because it, it's too close to home for you, or, like, close to the bone for you. But I think, t like, like laughing at the rest, this is yeah. my problem, is, like, you laugh at the... And you catch yourself doing it. Like, I was l laughing along to a podcast and then they did some stuff about Irish people that just... It was, like, funny enough, but it just, like... They'd gotten like twelve different facts wrong. Yeah, they were making right. jokes about stuff that I was like, "Oh, like I don't find this funny just because I know that this that that's not factual anymore." And then not the jokes have to be factual, whatever. But it was just too far away for me to like enjoy it. But it was just a podcast, and I was like, "Well, I've enjoyed ninety five percent of this right. podcast, so it's fine." I just didn't enjoy that three minutes in the middle. But it's like it's like having that reflection because you you know you can't control being upset about something. That's just a natural. Feeling. Yeah. But then having that reflection to be like, okay. So much of this was a, could be offensive to other people, and I've seen you say it could be, but like I enjoyed that, and I need to understand that this is just one bit that is because it's it's not for you. Very much recent to me. Like if my dad hadn't killed himself the week before and he was at the show, he put, I might have laughed at this bit, but just because it's very because <laughs> it's because. <funny. laughs> <laughs> 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 
Do you know what? My dad's suicide has affected me in so many ways. I'd have loved to have heard this a, a week ago. <laughs> but just because it's very fresh to you right now, like you can't laugh at it. But it's maybe it's very hard to have that reflection in the moment. Yeah, and I, I get if if they needed to leave, leave for That's sure. Absolutely fine. Totally, totally get that. And I actually sent a very nice message back explaining why I joke about suicide and i feel i'm allowed to for reasons that i talk about in my newest show that i am doing that i'm working at the match festival i bet you don't know any of the dates uh it's sunday the first of may at match fest then on tuesday the third at carolina brunswick with ivo graham can you say it like you weren't just out of a coma (laughs) (laughs) you Uh, and ivo were doing a split preview yeah Fucking class. Oh, yeah. I might get a train to Brighton to watch that because that is the best juxtaposition I've ever heard. Oh, we've done a few together. That's, we, that must be so fun. It's so great. I think he's one of the best comics in the country. Ivo, the his crowd work clips that are nine minutes long. It's unbelievable. Are the funniest things in the world. Dude, he's unbelievable. They're like Russian novels. It's, it's incredible. It's insane. It's just so fucking good, man. Um, But yeah, it, it's, I mean, we've got to wrap up in a minute. But I, I totally agree. You should be... Uh, I never get... Upset. I even say in a joke, you're allowed to be offended at some of the shit I've said. I talk a lot of shit on stage for someone who's not that intelligent. Mm. So you, you you are allowed to get annoyed at me for getting things wrong. Yeah. But it doesn't I'm, there's another act on. Yeah. There's another I'm and I'm, I'm allowed to talk shit about it. But I I'm I have like a, a you know a, a thing with suicide where I've it's happened to people I know, yeah, de- like and affected. The thing that ha- that is weird with stuff like suicide. One, like the, this is the joke in it. The basis of the joke, and it ties into toxic masculinity, is um, women love to say men have commitment issues. But if men have commitment issues, then how come so many of us are killing ourselves? <laughs> right, that's the joke. Yeah, I like. It. It's a it's funny, and then I go a lot deeper, and just, and it's just overly the top ridiculous, offensive. Like I would say, in like a sort of way, a Tarantino film is violent. It's over the top. Yeah, it's not. It's yeah. it's not. I'm not really making. But with it a point. deeper meaning behind it. Yeah, there's a little, but but then what people? Oh shit! My mic, my headphones just went off. It's just your connection. I, I unplugged them. That's right. I, I'll have to do this bit. I'll have to freestyle. I don't know. I don't think that's what freestyling is. Use the force. Man. <laughs> All right, Tim Westwood. Oh, I'm not going to hear it. I haven't got my headphones. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I, I've seen that bit that you do on on, on that topic, and I, I feel like like you're saying it's it's making like which which this comedy is making a big over the top statement and then breaking it down. Yeah, which is I feel like they probably walked out before you broke it down. Maybe. No, t- totally fair enough to walk out. Yeah. But I just thought who. In between, I, and by the way, I'm not just talking shit about them on the podcast, talk shit about them. I've done this bit on stage now, mm. just going, who in between that got, I don't think they're going to be listening. Um, yeah. But even if they are, they, they might be busy. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> Prior engagements. Um. I, 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 I DM'd them my rate in case they want me to do an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that's a, a great way to sort of wrap up the podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 is yeah, that yeah, masculinity? Yeah. You know, that's the problem. Masculinity it leads to like it, when it when don't it, don't use them as a tie in. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that. No, no, no. But masculinity. This is a problem with men. Don't like, use them to wrap the, up. The, the, the depression, problem. the depression caused by things like which is mainly a thing when we talk about toxic masculinity and it's okay to laugh at men punching walls and doing these things. Yeah. That's a guy fucking crying for help, and we just all seem to sort okay. of laugh at it. It's a very uh, but that's tasteless a transition. It's, 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 but it's to do with what I'm talking about. It is, it is. It is kind of tied into what we were... Uh, bad women, bad men. Bad women, bad men. But men sad are, men. Sa- bad women, sad men. But bad men women, are sad men. Ul- that's the title. Yeah, but, I think uh, we got but, but I feel like you men should? are ultimately more detriment, more dangerous to society than bad women. Mm, that is a, an wiggle. opinion. A guy, if guys don't get laid, they'll drive a car down the street. Like you that's got harmless. Cool. <laughs> that's, 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 that's fine. If more men dealt with being rejected like that, that would be a, a better Driving. world, really. That's I think fine. Elliot meant the footpath. Oh, okay, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. All you said <laughs> was just drive a car down the street. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant, I meant they mount the curb. Uh, okay, I yeah. just mean that. 
I don't know, it just mean they're taking uh, yeah. for a drive. That's a very healthy way of dealing with rejection, if anything. I, more men, please drive down oh, the street. No, no, These fuel prices. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's what I meant. Cycle, cycle down the street and deal with your rejection. But yeah, I think uh, that's. Uh, well, that's B Tech Philosophers. B Tech Philosophers. Episode 11, man. Uh, uh, you've already promoted your show. May 18th, I will be uh, doing the Brighton Fringe. We'll show out. It's not. It's not been written, and um, I'm not gonna lie. It might not be. Speak yourself up, bro. You're Nin- a 19th to the 20. 19th to 20. I'll write something. We'll have fun. We'll have a good time. I uh, done a couple new material spots yesterday, and um, I'm cooking again. Yeah, I'm cooking, yeah. and so come come watch this show because th- there's a meal ready. Yes, come hungry because you're gonna eat. That's what I like. Like the. <laughs> You, what, what that would be a good time for the noise, but it's fine. It's yeah. fine. You're, you're not. You're not as good as Westwood in that his sense. Name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Candyman. Just, just say it three times uh, in the mirror. Yeah, this has been an overly uh, offensive episode. It turns out. Mm. Um, but uh, that, yeah, we've had worse individual moments. Oh god, yeah, v- Vittorio. What you got going on, bro? Just come to my friend's show. I want to win the award. August. I like how you speak things into existence. Yeah. That's really nice. Vittorio Angeloni translations. It's going to be right. big. Yeah. I like how you so you just talk. Like, that's really nice. It's really refreshing to see. I feel like this is more off the pod yeah. conversation. I would just, just be nice to a friend. Okay, but let's, let's, you know, let's more, end strong. The more niceness to friends mean less fucking... Stop me. trying to tie everything in there. <laughs> yeah, man, <it's> just... <laughs> I won't be here next week because I'm in Oslo. Oh, so, shit. Okay. Yeah, I won't be here next week. So come tune in next week and Ellie will, will have found a co-host by then okay that's b-tech philosophers see you later follow us on instagram and twitter